Welcome to the webcast on industrial experiences on using domain-specific modeling. Before we go into details of four industry cases, I'll first quickly introduce you to domain-specific modeling and the prime motivation. Basically, the whole history of software engineer deals with raising the level of abstraction. This happened uh, 40 years ago very dramatically when we moved from Assembler to 3GL languages. After that, newer programming languages have very little increased the productivity. Nobody's moving to C Sharp or Java today because of productivity increase. What domain specific modeling is about is continuing to raise the level of abstraction from the current level by focusing on narrow application areas. And when this is done, the productivity increase is fundamental. And for many people, such a fundamental increase is very hard to believe. But companies who have built domain-specific languages and who have raised the level of abstraction claim to have significant improvement in quality and productivity. Most cases, like these cases here, are mostly anecdotes because people can't trace how companies like EADS actually measured that they have minimized errors. Luckily, some companies have provided data available and we will look next these four cases in more detail. The case one deals with touchscreen device in a, in a home automation. So you have a device in a wall of your home which controls your lights, heating, electricity alarms and so forth. And Panasonic has built a language for building these kind of touchscreen devices and the applications there, there are. So one of the languages you can see here. So the modeling concepts are here and visible in the toolbar and the engineer used those touchscreen concepts and then they also generators to produce the code. And here the Metali Plus as a tool provides then the rest of the tooling behavior to specify the models. So what Panasonic wanted to know is, is this approach working? So they did an evaluation, and actually a nice evaluation in two different ways. They implemented the same product again, what they have previously programmed, they implemented with domain-specific modeling languages. And they also were very keen on targeting different platforms. So they were inter interesting to find out, can they implement a nanogenerator and produce the code from the same models to different platform. So they had these models and a code generator for real embedded controllers, but then also for other, other alternatives like the microcontroller over here. And in addition to the languages, they also built the generators for complete uh, auto build process, not only produce the code, but also co compilers, uploading the device and execute there. And also they have other generators, not only these two code generators, but also one for PC simulation. So they put this in a trial and they measured time, building the same application two ways, calculating the time. And they find out that domain-specific modeling took only four days, which previously had took 17 days. They also started imp implementing the same product to a new platform. So by using three days to build the generator, they could build the same functionality into other kind of targets in microcontroller in this case. So when we inspect the return of investment uh, and the productivity increase of four to five hundred percent, the calculation clearly shows here that with the second product, the return of investment or the payback is, is reached. Of course, there's this implementation phase. So here's the amount needed to build the system by coding and here by using domain-specific modeling. But before being able to model and generate the code, they used 15 days, three weeks, to build the languages and generators. So very quickly uh, paid back. Totally other kind of environment, uh, not UI-specific, but the remote control, is dealing with home automation systems. So heating and handling lights and so forth of, of houses. And there's a company called Lowman which makes um, 
uh, home heating systems, basically. And uh, there are different kind of products they do, but they would like to control that with mobile phones. And for this purpose, Oman has created the languages for specifying uh, remote control applications. So the Molling concepts deal with the, the widgets, but also different kind of uh, services, the phone and how it integrates with uh, uh, Oman's heating system. So the ready designs they draw now, rather than writing the code, is something you can see here. And from here, the code is again uh, generated. Oman also calculates the return of investment, or we can calculate it based on the data they provide. Because they use two weeks to build the languages and code generators, but then one or two days to implement the ready product. So systems like these uh, for remote controlling. They were not able to compare the past development time, but they were claimed to be paying a six-figure number for the company who were developing these as a supplier for them. And obviously, building something in two days is fundamentally less expensive. More important is also that the uh, technical sales engineers at Oman who are working with the customer can implement these systems. So, so non-programmers can develop these applications now. So rather than outsourcing the development, they can do it in-house and uh, insource it. So uh, they automate it to be more more flexible and productive. Uh, third case uh, that I have to share is dealing with sports computers. So uh, Polar Retro makes different kind of sports computers and these have different kind of functionalities inbuilt. And the domain we are touching here is something that actually you see here in the screens. The different kind of functionality these sports computers provide. And usually this is code is, takes half the time to develop of the whole product code. And uh, Polar, Polar focused on these user interface applications because, as I said, they are the single largest piece of code, takes most time, but that's also the code that typically varies from product to product. Interestingly, also, from the code generation point of view, the code must be very efficient. So, this case put very uh, strict requirements for the type of code being generated that is optimal for memory and speed of the processor. And Polar created these language and generators internally, something that you can see here. So they describe, for example, the uh, user interactions and uh, menus and menu states and things like that. And what is interesting from the evaluation point of view is that Polar did very nice uh, parallel evaluation strategy. They compared, again, current practice and domain-specific modeling in two ways. First, they built a laboratory study. So they asked six current developers already making these with uh, with the C. Uh, they have C and Assembler in these devices. Uh, and they ask each the engineer to make own implementation. So they get six different typical implementations. And then they measure the time how long it took took them now with this new domain-specific modeling language they have been developing. And the other way to do the research was a pilot project. So one person implemented a large portion of the whole product or the features there in the whole product. And then they compared the findings. And the laboratory study showed that at least 750% uh, faster are when used with domain-specific modeling than when calculated time they use when coding these applications manually. They also ask opinions from the developers. So how, how they feel, not measure, but subjective opinions. And one of these topics they asked was about productivity. So in a Likert scale, one to five, five is the best. So uh, <clears throat> the productivity of domain-specific modeling approach was considered uh, almost five. So six, uh, among six engineers, five said five and one said uh, four. Compared to the manual programming approach used, uh, it scored very much uh, less. The same for error prevention. They can prevent errors to happen already early on 
and may be very important for coding side, code quality side. How good is the generated code? They find out that the quality of the generated code is better than what they are writing manually. Also, the usability of the language and tooling and also ease of learning is, is better. Then they also did a pilot, and the pilot find out that the uh, domain specific modeling approach is more than nine times faster, more than 900 times faster, percent faster. We can also calculate the return of investment on this information. And uh, what is very interesting with the uh, polar side is that they use 60 hours, so seven, eight days, seven and a half days, to build the languages and generators. And then it took two and a half days about to build the same function, which previously, with the manual approach, took a man month. So the payback comes already in the first product. Then the last case deals with military radios. But now, uh, testing side of these. So these military radios are uh, voice over IP phones for military needs and the uh, particular domain here, uh, and by domain I mean area of interest, is, is te testing these devices in a network. So how they can uh, work together in all different options. And Electropit build a testing approach in two different ways. They had a modeling language for testing, for modeling test cases, and then they generate test case for the testing platform. The other approach they used, they also were modeling just a test logic, and then a model-based testing tool generated from this logic multiple test cases. So the modeling languages look like this. You can see here, uh, testing starts, device one makes the point-to-point -point call to device three, after two seconds ends the calls and so forth. And in this test case, there is a number of testing devices available uh, applied. The other approach for modeling is modeling test logic. So you don't say, for example, which particle device we are using is a random device and the test generator then goes through all the alternatives available in the test setup. Again, we can calculate the return of investment. Uh, Electropit says that it's about 10 times faster. So work can, that previously took two weeks is done now done in one day. And uh, Electropit used two weeks to get this running. And it used then one extra week to make it better, like visualize or animate the models while you're running the test cases. There are also other remarkable improvements they find for the testing approach they're using. One of them is that test coverage dramatically increase when they are modeling test cases and they can generate them. And they can also more easily configure uh, tests. All these examples basically come to the issue of economics, when domain-specific modeling makes sense. And as you can see, these four cases and the data they provide show that it makes a lot of sense. So in cases where you have a repetition, you are building a product line, you have variants, or you have a single product with multiple similar features or multiple developers doing the same kind of thing, or you can outsource the work to the domain expert, so for non-programmers, uh, then, then they are the good areas to apply domain-specific modeling. The key part is then, of course, that every, nothing comes for free. You need to do investment. So you need to build your language and generators first. As you saw in these cases, it is not a huge investment. So in these four cases, building languages varied from one week to three weeks. And that is the average we have detected in other uh, domains as well. One of the key reasons why it can be so efficiently built these languages is because of tooling. In Metadata Plus, you can build your languages, notations, rules, generators without doing any programming. So you can build your environments very quickly. So domain-specific modeling languages like these four cases provide uh, and testify show that you can reach significantly better productivity, five to ten times faster. The quality of the code is much better than you have now 
and it's also more easier to use and introduce for your new developers. This makes only sense if you have tools like Metadi Plus, which makes moving into domain-specific languages much more feasible. Your experts can focus on language design and not on building the tools. And also models will update when your language uh, changes. And most importantly for, for the business side, creation of languages doesn't take much time. So if you have a domain which needs language, you will have it next month running. If you want to read details of these cases, these are all public cases. So they are all available uh, if you want to go more details. Thank you for watching this video. For more cases, customer stories, testimonials on Metadi Plus, please visit metacase.com. Thank you for watching.